Scorpio. Scorpio, this is your forecast for June of 2013 and this month is definitely going to turn the dial for you because here in May you had a lot of things going on here in the relationship sector or with partnerships. You know, it's all these talks back and forth and uh, who needs to compromise what and so forth. So you've kind of been a little busy with that and also due to uh, just the needs around you might have been pretty powerful um, having to balance everything with uh, with work, your co-workers and so forth. All that seventh house energy is how you relate to others. You know, so it's not just within your relationship or marriage, it's also how we relate to people in general and how they view you and what you're doing about it, you know, how you go about it. So at least some of that pressure is off. Now this month in June, it's going to a different level. It's going a little bit more deep within or more so, should I say, on an intimate level. And, and the, those inner feelings, uh, stirrings that you feel you need for yourself, kind of like a little recuperation uh, period. A little bit more perhaps also me time. Not as much as the 12th house would represent, but the 8th house is also a water house and water also uh, always wants to nurture those sentiments feelings um, that we have within and especially after a relatively stressful spring which it has been for you ever since here February I'd say especially uh, March April and May and you can go back to those previous forecasts just to, to kind of recap and, and see how things fell in, into place and look at the journey that you've been on and right now I'm just seeing like there's a big sigh of relief as the planets have moved on so to speak and you you deserve that Scorpio you've done a great great job and uh, you're so beautiful when you really get out there and you get focused and you do your thing I mean you you are you've got the super sharp uh, ability to uh, focus on what it is you're doing but don't forget yourself in the middle of it because then I worry for you, okay? Saturn is in that first house and Saturn is saying, hey, girl or boy, slow down a little bit. The first house is you. It's the self. It's the physical body. And Saturn might be saying here that, you know, you can't keep burning on all cylinders. You're, you're, you're evaporating all your energy. So, so please promise that you do listen within and take whatever whatever precautions that you need so at least i can be at peace for that and then we have uh, now top of the month venus uh, is uh, moving into your um, uh, into uh, your ninth house which is in cancer so that venus it's what you love it's what you desire it's those things that that really make you feel whole and one with yourself and it moving into Cancer is that, yes, you will feel that June will be calling for, for your needs to nurture your spirit because it's the ninth house, okay? And that's the house of Jupiter, of expansion, of truth, inner wisdom, seeking higher perspectives on life, uh, past lives, you know, how it all ties in together, future lives, where we're heading, you know, the whole cosmic thing. Like the 12th house has a lot of that. But this ninth house here is, uh, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted there with the phone. However, yes, we're talking about this Venus into the ninth house of philosophy, you know, how things all tie together. You will notice that once both Mercury and Venus is there, you, your desire is going to be to, to reach up into spirit, you know, and nurture yourself because it is the sign of cancer which is nurturing. It wants to nurture all those things that feed spirit, okay? Maybe you haven't had the time that you uh, have wanted to devote to this area, but you're gonna get this now for this month, where I do see that you'll be doing a little bit more meditation and yoga and soul searching and seeking and uh, perhaps reading up or even taking some courses on uh, this, where you can uh, um, 
devote some more of that spiritual uh, food, which we all need, you know, and uh, for you, it's a great time for it. Now, there's more planets going to be moving into this area here a little bit later in the month, and we'll come back to that. But here on the 7th, we see Venus trining uh, Neptune, and Venus being in this area of the ninth house, which is that higher philosophical, spiritual uh, uh, need. It, it's going to be tying in here with the fifth house. Uh, so once again, that, that's joy, it's leisure. This is what you're wanting to do when you have 10 minutes, is to go off somewhere, read a book. For those of you who have older children, you might even be somehow implementing them into this journey, you know, opening their little eyes uh, to that there's a larger world than just the physical world itself, too. So you might be nurturing their little souls and spirits here in this month on that level, mentoring them, teaching them. And then we have the new moon on the 8th, and this is going to be in your 8th house. So that's the Scorpion house, ruled by Pluto. And uh, this new moon here for you is to make a very deep intention of, yes, it is now time to kind of allow yourself to go deeper into this uh, Scorpion, Plutonian energy. And now you are Scorpio, so you're right at home there. And we get to have this uh, aspect once a year in the 8th house, so it's more like putting out the affirmation, I want more time for intimacy, you know, to, to have that shared aspect. Uh, it's also a time to put in uh, uh, intentions for uh, how you want your loans and uh, grants and commissions and royalties. If you feel that you've been a little underpaid, now would be the time to kind of really bring that forward, you know, to, to a JV partner uh, or a boss that, that you, it's bringing your worth up to where it belongs. If they haven't done it by then, this is a very good intention to put in uh, so that you're lifting your sense of self-worth in the eyes there of the others. And then we have on the uh, 12th and 14th, we got Venus here. In that ninth house, it's going to square sixth house. So something there between probably the everyday schedule uh, where Uranus is, that schedule, we've talked about that before, Scorpio, it's not as straight, that, that path is not as straight as it used to be in the past because Uranus is there, it's going to be there for a few years. So many of you might feel that, that this road is like a little bumpy, sometimes it's smooth and then suddenly there's so much going on that you can't really follow the routine. And actually, you are a person that loves routine. You know, you, you, you're a habit person, you know. <clears throat> Your opposite sign is Taurus. Uh, they like things to be set. And you are a fixed sign. So it, it kind of rattles some of you Scorpions to, to have this kind of uh, unpredictability in your daily routines. But it is what it is. This is going to last for a few years, so just get used to it. So on this date, we have Venus there squaring uh, that routine, your everyday routine. So maybe on this day you've planned to go do something for your spirit, maybe go off, do some yoga or whatever, and then here comes some other need thrown upon you where it might have to be a cancellation. So it's not a big deal, it's just that it's taking away from that nurturing energy that you were wanting to, to have or acquire. Then we have some beautiful days, 19th and 20th. For those of you who can be with family on this day, is a great time for a family reunion. Uh, the sun there is conjunct uh, with Jupiter, which expands everything. And Jupiter is that happy-go-lucky energy, you know, gives you belly laughs and so forth. Um, just generally a very positive time. And this is going to be right on the cusp here between your 8th and ninth house. Um, some of you might be traveling on this date, it might be foreign countries, or you might be having visitors coming in from afar, which is a wonderful thing here, uh, as Mercury also conjuncts with Venus. So it, it's a day to really communicate, you know, and share, and just be in that joyful spirit. So we have a wonderful time looking at the end of June. On the 20th, the Sun is going to be moving into your ninth house, into Cancer even more need for nurturing and be nurtured. And same with Jupiter. Now, Jupiter has been in your eighth house for a whole year. Now it's moving into the ninth house. Now, this is going to be big for a lot of you Scorpions. 
because this Jupiter is going to be with you for a whole year until summer of 2014. It's a time for study. It's a time to expand. It's a time to really get in touch with those old ancient, I would nearly like to say the old, old ancient aliens, um, but, but you know, the, the old belief systems that we've had and then mixing them up and actually updating them to new, to the more metaphysical. We'll talk more about this next month and that's just the beginning of this Jupiter journey which you're going to have for an entire year. But no, that, that's really going to be inspiring to you and I'm really, really joyful because I know a lot of you have that so, what you say, embedded, ingrained into your DNA and now is the time that you can either learn a whole lot, that you will start studying. Some of you are going to turn it around and you have studied for a long time and you're going to go out and mentor and teach in this year to come. So, so that, that Jupiter is like a judge of knowledge. Um, so, and then of course, end of the month here, uh, this Venus is going to move into your career house. Okay, so it's moving there right at the very tail end. We have the full moon on the 23rd. Uh, right uh, before the Mercury going retrograde on the 26th, Mercury retrograde, uh, you don't want to sign anything. We've spoken about that before. Uh, new contracts, new concepts, don't start before the third week of July. If you can wait to the end of July, it's so much better. Just so you don't add, end up getting a lot of delays and miscommunications and all those hiccups, which is just extremely frustrating. Um, so yeah, and your Mercury retrograde uh, this uh, time around will be in this ninth house. So it might be travel. Travel might be delayed for you if you're going abroad. Um, there might be flights that are canceled or boats being canceled. Who, who knows? <laughs> okay, that's going to be an experience. I just want to end this here on the note with this full moon this month. Now we had a, a full moon eclipse last month. We've had a couple of solar eclipses here in this last month. So a lot of those energies from the eclipses are still with us because they linger a month and day afterwards. And some of them have the ability and the energy to linger for an entire year. So it's still with us under this full moon, even though we don't have an eclipse, but we have something else. This full moon will partner up here with Pluto. So it's going to be quite of a juicy month. Uh, on this full moon <clears throat> and what more and I don't normally like I said on the the other recordings here too I don't normally go into too much technical detail for those of you who don't know astrology that well but we have a kite and it looks like this just like a kite this formation coming up here on the 23rd on the time of the full moon here conjunct with Pluto and you see on top of the kite we have the Sun and Jupiter and the sun is you, essentially, and Jupiter is the abundance, you know, what wants to expand in your life, the giver of all good lucks. It's right here, side by side, on top of this uh, kite, and you have it supported by Neptune, which is your dreams, and Saturn, which is, you know, your sense of authority and your sense of security, and uh, Jupiter here is saying, don't dream little, dream big. You know, and Saturn will normally say, you can't dream big, that's not realistic. You know, Saturn's our realism. But uh, in this sense, right now, Saturn is backing, giving security to Jupiter, saying it's okay to dream big. I got your back. You know, so this is the top portion of this kite is a trine here. And then the bottom of the kite down here is that full moon Pluto. And that is shedding all the old. What no longer needs to be a part of you, or what has served its purpose. Pluto likes to rid oneself. It's like throwing everything out of the, the closets or the garage. But now we're talking about our psyche and our emotional bodies. What no longer works or serves me a purpose needs to go. Okay, so I mean, it could be a quite intense full moon on the 23rd. Um, but it's being supported here by Saturn saying that whatever needs to go, it's good. Let it go and follow your dream, Neptune, because all of this is coming together and it's like dream big or go home. So I would like your take on it. What's going to be happening to you with this kite formation that we're having at the end of the month. 
So if you're listening to this early June, you might want to come back at the end of the month. You know, re-listen to this and also put in your little comment there and how this affected you so all the others can see what it did for you and how it felt for them. This way we're all growing and learning together. And as always, very inspiring to speak with you, Scorpio. I have met a lot of you here on private readings this month, and it's always nice to make new friends there on that level. So I wish you the best. Listen to your, your uh, moon sign and rising sign, and I'll see you next month. Bye now.